Greetings from beautiful Bangkok. We're back and we're off on our next adventure to see the jade, no, the emerald Buddha made of jade and then some more shopping, I'm not gonna lie. So maybe a bookstore, stay tuned. This is Chinatown. Instagram for more photos. Wow, look at all that. Doris Sander on Instagram. All the colors and textures are just, patterns are just amazing. This is the reclining Buddha. I got better pictures on the front. Instagram, Instagram. So neat. Walking the elephant. <laughs> this is impressive. That is impressive. So, this is the gold palace. Who is that in the elephant pants? <laughs> uh, wow. So awesome. So shiny. I figured out these are the demon guardians. And the Jade Buddha is in there. But you have to be no photos. No photos. This is Shrine Streets.
chicken salad and rice with taro. Oh, thank you. And beef, and I forget what this is. And that, oh, you got the flavorful stuff. <laughs> and that's where we were shopping and getting my feet eaten by fish. Right there at the Ferris wheel. Fun day. Look, they made me gluten-free pasta. No. This is just wrong on many levels. Oh, it's my party again! Show and tell for souvenir shopping. Look at my gorgeous new bracelet. So cute. And the ladies in the executive lounge gave me a present. It's a pink elephant. So cute. Okay. And wow. Okay. So I got a wooden cat for my neighbors back home in Tennessee. And I got new coconut bowls because I gave my Vietnam one away. What a beautiful. And I got, are you ready for this? I got a kitty charcuterie board. Oh, so cool. <laughs> okay, I think. I'm gonna have to get the rest out for you. Okay, these are all little just elephant statues for my club members at school. And this was an impulse buy as well. <laughs> so cute, right? Um, but I had to buy a coworker who loves Thailand and comes a lot. She loves these shirts so she wanted some replacement ones <laughs> funny story um she's from south africa so she told me she wanted vests and i'm like vests you're gonna have to give me a picture megan so yeah vests are tank tops there so there you go and oh then look at my new dress isn't it beautiful oh my gosh so it's actually a long skirt and a blouse and an over blouse oh my gosh or vest <laughs> so beautiful oh shopping is so fun here it's so fun <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry if I appear a bit frazzled, but it is Monday afternoon after a fabulous, fabulous vacation in Thailand. Um, you know, back to work is is rough after a really awesome vacation and back to work and having to sub in first grade all day is really a rude rude awakening <laughs> i mean i have been subbing in first grade math and science i don't know if i've told you this but yeah but that's just two hours Today, I was in there for just hours on end, and I love them, but whew, that was rough. Anyway, anyway, I just need to wrap up my vacation videos, so I'm going to quickly tell you how the reading went those last few glorious days in Thailand. So, um, dang. I really kept from swearing there, but it was hard. Um, who was that? Oh, man. I gotta try this again. Okay. Here's intermission, because I don't feel like refilming that other bit. Birds, boats, beach. 
What more could you want in life? Okay. Neptune Zamora. Thank you. Thank you so much. She told me that the poet that I was trying to read for Shorty September was Rilke. And as soon as she said it, I said, yes, that is the one. So, Rilke. So, I got me a Rilke from the library. And I nabbed letter letters to a young poet. Um, and lo and behold, that was not his poetry. It was a series of 10 letters that he sent like in his mid thirties, early to mid thirties, I think, to a younger man who was also wanting to get into poetry. Um, and so once I realized that, I was like, okay, well, these are pretty good. I'm gonna, but I really wanna read his you know, poetry to get a sense for why he's writing these letters and whatnot. So I went back to my library app and I got, um, Poems of Rainier Maria Rilke. That's the dude right there. And, you know, they were okay. Um, at first I thought this is going to be good, but no, it's not my thing. Like, it wasn't that they weren't good, but I think for me, poetry has to thematically interest me. Um... And the things that he was talking about just didn't really. So, I obviously love nature writing. So, that is what I gravitate toward in poetry the most. But I also like, you know, kind of societal issues, emotional impact. Um, but not the romantic stuff, if you know what I mean. Like, I like love, but I don't like that romantic, like, capital R kind of stuff. Anyway. Um, so yeah, in the letters, I also thought those were going to be good at first, but then they got, you know, I'm not going to lie, a little pretentious. So, uh, let me move on from that topic before I get myself in trouble. So I think that I already talked about when I sing Mountains Dance in the last vlog. Fabulous. Um but not for everybody, total cilantro read. And then um, I also told you in an earlier vlog that I started this one, What If by Randall Monroe, and that is kind of science writing on essay topics, but I read the first, you know, seven or eight, but the topics that he was talking about just were not of interest to me. And it was a lot about statistics, like proofing things through statistics. And I just, it's not the kind of science I was interested in. So I just DNF'd that one. And then I started, <laughs> I think yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. I said, let me start the I had to charge my phone, or I would have read love songs, but I had to charge my phone, so. Well, that doesn't make sense, Doris. If you had to charge your phone, you would have read the physical book. What I'm saying is I don't remember, okay? And that seems to be a theme. But, you know, if you had to teach first grade, you wouldn't remember things either. So, I started reading The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope, and I, I read the first paragraph, because this is the group read for Victober, and I was like, Doris, I think you've read this already. <laughs> so I looked it up on um, Goodreads and read the synopsis, and I was like, yeah, yeah, totally, I've read that. So... I had to pick myself another Victober read. So I settled on The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. You see it down there at the bottom. I know, I know I'm lazy about this booktube stuff, but anyway. Yeah, I, I haven't even read like maybe a sentence of that thus far, but 
I have high hopes. I have high hopes for it because I watched um, Brian from Bookish put out a Victober, like where you should, should start or something like that about Victorian literature. And there were four on there that I really want to read. Uh, I think Grub Street, Moonstone, this one, and uh, Cranford. So uh, I decided to grab this one because Britta Bowler has mentioned it a couple times recently as well. So I feel like that's going to be a good read. So then just to wrap this up, I did want to mention... Uh, the Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by Honoré Fannin Jeffers. I have passed the midway point, passed 400 pages, and friends, this is, this is fabulous. This is such a good book. Great. It's a great read. Um, it just feels so effortless to read it. I am completely immersed in the characters. It doesn't matter who the character is, if it's, um, the Ailey or her mother who um, kind of predominate predominate in the book, or if it's minor characters from farther back in history that are just there for a chapter or so, I just immediately am immersed in all of them and just really am loving their stories. Gorgeous. So I talked about this quite extensively in maybe the first Thailand vlog. Um, and I may do a currently reading, but if I have to be teaching first grade, it's not going to happen. So I'm just going to tell you a few more thoughts while I'm at it. Um, the thing that has caught me recently is um, she is writing about um, the historically black universities, colored universities. And writing them from the perspective of Ailey, who is going there in the 80s, during the Reagan years, or early 90s. Um, but also from her parents' perspective, who graduated from the same university, obviously the generation prior, and just the overlapping of those stories kind of back to back and thematically the things that these women were going through uh, and how it was different, you know, historically because of the era that they were going through them in. I mean, just fascinating, fascinating writing. This is so good, so good. Um, I will say that she's repeating not repeating but um i mean trigger warnings for um sexual abuse and it is happening multiple times generationally and part of me would like her to change the storyline a bit like it's redundant but, like, how horrible is it that I would say that? You know what I'm saying? Um, and maybe I need to realize that that's happening over and over and over again. Uh, so, yeah, just so many interesting thoughts in this book. But it's so engaging like i'm immersed every time i pick it up so hopefully i i, I wanted to maybe finish this on vacation but obviously that didn't happen and part of that was because i got sidetracked with other reads as well um but maybe maybe by this friday i will finish so we'll see we'll see you know first grade anyway thanks so much for tagging along on the thailand trip Thailand is amazing, y'all. I love it so much. And I think we're going to go back. Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> Chat soon. Bye-bye.